Shannon from Tesla and Chill, and we have another really cool video for you today. Today we are going to be doing part two of a video where we are going to do a DIY installation on the Model 3. Now this is really a follow-up video from the video where we were shooting to see what the noise differences were between the Model 3 and the Honda Accord Hybrid that's right over there. Now we are going to see if we can make the Tesla even quieter. So we are going to be installing some weather strips here. I got these right from Amazon. Thank you, two-day shipping. Um, this is from Basnor. That's the company, or Basnor. Now, this isn't any kind of like endorsed video. We're not getting any compensation from them. Um, I just ordered them from Amazon because it was $39.99, and I thought that sounded pretty cheap. And again, we had the two-day shipping. So I figured, why not? We'll try it out. Now we are going to go and inventory what is inside here so we can take a look at that and then follow all the directions. I hope they're clear directions because I'm not completely sure how to do this. But before we get started and before we open this up, take a second, help your girl out, subscribe to this channel, and give this video a like. Now let's see what's inside. I think it comes in a pretty straightforward package. You can see it's made in China, so I hope it's good. <laughs> So let's see. And this should be weather stripping for really all the doors here. All right, it looks like we've got some primer for its adhesion promoter. So we got quite a few of those. All right, and we've got this stripping. See if we can open it all up. Oh, and it tells you which one it's for. Okay, so this one's for the V pillar. So I'm probably gonna leave them in their bags because I don't wanna get them confused, um, but they're really bendy. Let's see, we have the B pillar, we have the A pillar. That one's quite a size difference in the bag considering they're both for the pillars. Uh, this one is for the right front door. Then we have the left front door, the left rear door, and then the right rear door. And this really smells kind of like paint. It's got a really strong odor to it. It's kind of making me a little bit nauseous, so I hope that smell goes away. And this is our instruction kit. It says to read all the instructions before you install the door seal kit. Let's see, and it also gives you a little QR code so you can watch the video installation, which is available on YouTube. Um, I think I really just want to get right to it, so I'm just going to read the directions and see if it makes sense and I can follow it that way. They've got a few pictures here. It looks fairly straightforward. It looks like you just clean the install location, uh, apply the adhesion promoter, rip the double-sided tape off the weather strips, and then you just paste it along the side of the door. Let's see. And it just says here, it says that it's a moderately challenging DIY project. It requires care, a steady hand, and the ability to follow instructions, and you need patience to align the edges. Um, if you're uncomfortable with any installation for any reason, we recommend you contact a professional car seal installer at an automotive custom shop and have that person do the installation. I'm gonna try to save a few bucks. We'll try to do it myself. Oh, they've got a lot more QR codes on the back, so you can get each pillar installation. Um, let's see. It gives you a little detailed picture here. It tells you which pillar to do and how to run the weather strip. But I think we're going to get started. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to clean the area, and then we can start sticking these bad boys on. All right, you guys, we are gonna get started with the right front door. And you might have noticed that I changed the car. Um, it was facing the opposite direction, but I figured if I'm really gonna mess up, I would rather it be on the passenger side since the driver's side gets used so frequently. So this is gonna be my error side. Once I get to the driver's side, I should be a pro. So now that I swapped the car, let's get started on this door. The first thing I'm gonna do is just clean it off. I've got this wet towel here and then just a dry towel. So it's only got water on it, but I wanna make sure I can get it just as clean as possible here. I don't want any extra debris getting in there. And that's why I moved the car in the garage too. Um, I figured if it was in the garage, it would be at least a little bit more of a controlled environment than just having it out in the driveway. 
But once that is wiped down, we will just dry it off. And I wanna make sure it's as dry as possible. Now I did actually go back and I watched one of the videos on the QR codes um, that was on the instruction paper there. And it was really straightforward. It was really just a video of um, a guy putting on a liquid adhesive. Uh, we of course have these that came in our kit, but he just put on the liquid adhesive and then just stuck these on and trimmed off the excess. Um, they really just had music to it. So it was really straightforward. Um, I think it should be fairly simple, but I think that's dry. So we will go ahead and get started. Now, the one thing I did grab was just some gloves here. I keep these in my son's diaper bag in case he has a blowout when we're on the go. But the adhesive was so strong smelling, um, I don't want that to destroy my fingers. Um, so we are just gonna put these on for extra protection. And extra protection is always a good thing. Uh, but let's go ahead and open up this primer here. It's the Primer Adhesion Promoter. And it smells so strong, it almost smells like you're in a paint or glue factory. Uh, so by the time you're done, you could be really high. <laughs> or maybe even if you did a bad job, you might not feel bad about it because you might be so happy. I don't know. <laughs> but once we put that on, I'm gonna put it on pretty liberally. I wanna make sure I get as much surface area as possible because I'm not completely sure uh, where I'm gonna be putting the, the door pieces. I think the hard part on the door is gonna be working around the drains. There are two drain sections, and what we'll just have to do is we'll just have to cut out that piece of weather stripping as we go around them. And I'm gonna cut them out once we actually get to those sections. Um, I don't wanna cut them out ahead of time in case I start stretching the stripping um, and then the holes don't line up. So I think our adhesive is on pretty good. I'm gonna take these gloves off. Feel like I'm getting ready for surgery. <laughs> All right. Let's see, we've got the wider section for the bottom of the door and that smaller section will go up the door. I'm gonna start right at the corner because I feel like that would be the hardest part that would um, be matching up. So let's see. It's really just a peel and stick, but it's just extra sticky. Some sticky stuff that came off. Let's see, I'm gonna stick it not completely on the corner, but pretty well in the corner. I don't want it to overlap and then show through the door. Let's see. But what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to follow just these natural indentations in the door. Let's see. And I'll do the small one first. And I don't want to press it down super hard as I go up, just in case I need an adjustment. But I'm just going to do a few inches at a time. And it looks like I'll have a lot of excess once I get to the top. So I really like that they give you a little bit of extra. That way you don't have to really stretch the pieces. You can really give it as much stripping as it needs. So hopefully at the end of this, I'll be an expert stripper. <laughs> okay, just kidding. We're almost at the top. Here we go. And see how much extra there is? That's a really good amount they give you. Just gonna press that down. Okay, and I'm gonna wait to just cut it at the end. And now let's get started on the bottom. This is gonna be the harder part, I think, just because we have to cut out those drainage parts. So here is the first one. I'm just gonna make the two snips right around it. Let's see. Get one side. Really hope I don't mess this up. Okay. And the other 
other side. So right about there. Might need some sharper scissors. Okay. And I'll just take out that inside piece. All right, there we go. That's it. I think it fits pretty well around that drainage part and you don't even know the piece is missing when you look right at it. But we'll go ahead and we'll line it up with the rest of the car. And I'm, again, I'm going as close to the bottom as I can, but not completely like on the edge. Almost to that second drainage spot. This one's going to be a little bit harder since it's right on the inside. So let's go ahead and get that part and move up in here. And this one is really hard to see just because it's even so dark in here. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna make a snip on one side and a snip on the other. And we'll just take out that middle piece. little piece. All right, now I'll go through, make sure everything is pressed down as possible. I'm really glad I'm practicing on the passenger side. Uh, I would really hate to make a mistake on the driver's side, but I think it's pretty foolproof for the most part, unless you make like a wrong cut or something. I think it's not too difficult. Now we'll cut off our extra pieces. I think the really difficult part is gonna be getting inside the door. So I'm glad I started with this one just to get a good feel for it. All right, so that is the extra for the inside. Just that little piece there. Now let's go ahead and look at this extra piece. This one, we got a whole lot of extra. There we go. All right, that is it. Let's get started on the next part. Now we're gonna move on to the B pillar. I think this one should maybe be the easiest just because it's so small and it's really in the most accessible part of the car. But again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna wipe it down, make sure it's as clean as possible. There we go, and then we'll just dry it. All right. Here is the B pillar part. You can see it's a whole lot smaller than the pieces we were just using. And I think this piece might be my favorite. It's even more circular than the other pieces. I don't know if you can tell, but the other pieces were just really um, kind of long and thin, a little rectangular. This one is like a little tube, but let's go ahead and get started. We will use these gloves again and get our adhesive. But if you've done anything similar to this, if you have any tips, please drop them in the comments. This is really just a DIY project for me. You might be a little bit more of an expert or have some different tips. So let me know what you guys are thinking. All right. I'm just gonna keep following the same process that we've got going. Put that adhesive on. Okay. 
linked to Zachary doing this project, I know that I could probably never work in a paint factory. <laughs> but let's go ahead and continue. I think the hardest part might be getting this stuff off. It's so sticky. We're just going to stick it right in there, right in that indentation. I just want to run it right along the edge. And once you stick it on, it like really sticks on there. So I wouldn't press it down up like all the way until you're completely done. I just want to kind of run my fingers along it. Make sure it's in place the best it can be. All right, and I think that is it. So now I'm going to press it down. This adhesive stuff is just so strong. And we've got a lot of excess here, so we'll just trim that off. There we go, look at that piece. You could almost cut the other end off and use it as a straw. I'm just kidding, we wanna save the sea turtle, so don't do that. All right, let's move on to the next part. All right, now we're gonna do the hard part, which is this A pillar here. And I think it's gonna be really hard just because it's got all these pieces that you can't move and you have to get behind them. So it might not make for the best camera angle, um, but you can know what I'm doing. But we're just doing the same process like we did on the door. We're just cleaning it first with this wet rag, and then we'll go back through it and dry it. And I think a lot of it, you might have to go just by touch, getting behind this hose. Um, you might just really have to get your fingers in there. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna go back through and dry it. Get my gloves on. And this, again, the same process as before. I'm just putting it on really as liberally as possible. Just kind of getting a wide surface there. And I'm still just trying to follow kind of that natural indentation that's right on the edge of the door. That's really going to be where I try to put the weather stripping. But it's just really hard to see what's going on. pretty good. We'll go ahead and get this one. And we're going to have the adhesive part really go closest to the edge. And this extra piece is going to go closest to the door. And I'm going to try to feed it through first. I think that might be the best way to do it. That way, it'll be a whole lot easier just to kind of guide it when I'm pulling off the, the red part. get started here. So if you know someone with small hands, this might be a really good time to be friends with them. <laughs> See. And it's super sticky. Okay. There we go. 
I'm going to put it as close to the top and inner edge that I can. And then just press it a little bit on the way down. I don't really feel the need to really like stretch it all the way just because they give you so much excess. So I'm really hoping this will be at least a little bit more of a noise buffer. I guess we'll do the final test uh, maybe a little bit later, maybe tomorrow or something. We'll see if it really does make a difference with that decibel meter app. And I'm really glad I fed it through first. This makes it a whole lot easier. It really, once you start pressing it down, the rest of it just kind of falls right in line. Let's pull our extra piece and have it line up with the piece we did just a few minutes before. Right. Now go back through and I'm just going to press it down as much as I can. All right, and then we'll just cut off our extra. All right, there we go. Now let's move on to the next part. Now we're doing the right rear door. So let's start again with the same process. It gets a little monotonous, but I wanna make sure I'm doing it the best I can. So we're just gonna clean it off real quick. Again, just using that same rag. It's just got some water on it. Just gonna get all up in them creases. All right, and then we will just go back and just dry it really good. And you might be able to tell this is the part of the car where my son sits. We've got these little snacks and they're really convenient. I like to snack on them too. This is the blueberry with sweet potato. We're a big snacking family, so I'm glad those are there. I think that glue might be making me hungry. <laughs> All right, so that is dry. Let's go ahead and put on my doctor gloves. I might apply to like Grey's Anatomy after this. I don't know. I just feel really comfortable with gloves on. <laughs> All right, we'll get our primer set. the back door it's got two drainage parts just like the front door does so again we're just going to have to make those little cuts as we go along in the stripping and then we can just continue on all right there we go one has a little bit more of a rounded tip and this one has a little bit more of the edge so I'm going to have the rounded tip go up top and this one at the bottom let's see is that right that looks right And since this one doesn't have a 90 degree angle like the other door does, I'm just going to start right at the bottom in the corner and just work my way up this way. Stick it just right in the edge there. Again, just following that natural indentation. I have to make my first cut for the drain.
So I'm really just kind of eyeballing that, but I don't feel like it's too difficult. All right, and here is that first piece. We don't need that anymore. Second drainage part. You can come in close. We're just going to do, let's see, line it up a little snip here, and then a little snip on the other side. Let's cut out that middle. And I guess if you don't do it, I don't know what would happen. I guess your door might fill up with water or something. I don't know. And again, I don't want to press all the way down completely until I know for sure it's the spot I want it to be in. But I feel like it's pretty easy just to navigate your way up. I almost feel like this door is easier to do than the front door, maybe because I'm so experienced now. <laughs> all right, there we go. Let's go back and press it all down. I really love how much extra they give you. That is really convenient. <laughs> kind of makes you not worry as much because you know you've got this extra stuff in case you mess up. All right, so that is all done. We are done with the right side. We are gonna move on to the left side and that'll be it. <laughs> that extra. I'm super glad they include that much because trial and error, sometimes there's a lot more error, but I think this door is a success. We are going to move on to the left A pillar now. I'm going to do the left front A pillar.
side B pillar time. Well, we're all done with the car. We've done all the stripping on all the doors and the pillars. I think overall it was pretty easy. There weren't a ton of instructions that were included in the kit, but I really don't think a lot of instructions were necessary. Um, it was really straightforward, especially with the videos that you can find out on the QR codes, but they give you lots of extra stripping. You can see here all the pieces we didn't use. We even had some extra adhesion wipes and we're not gonna use those either. Um, so overall, I think it was pretty good. Take a look here. I think the door sounds like it's got a little bit of an extra thud when it closes. Maybe it's just me. I don't know, but take a listen. 
That sounds pretty solid, right? I think that sounds good. Um, but you can see there's no weather stripping that's sticking out. You don't even really notice that it's there. So I think it was probably a good improvement on the car. Now, I definitely want to take it out for a test drive with our decibel meter app, see if there was any difference, but it's really late right now, so I'm going to do that tomorrow morning, but we've got the car charging, so it will be ready for us to go, so I'll check in with you in the morning. It's the morning after our install. We just did the weather stripping last night, so we are in the car right now. We are going to see if there's any difference on our decibel meter app. We're going to see if the noise has been reduced. Um, now that we've installed the stripping. So we are gonna do the same thing that we did in our previous video. We're gonna drive at 35 miles per hour on the city roads, and then we're gonna hit the interstate. We'll do about 60 to 65 miles per hour there, and then we'll just compare the numbers with our previous numbers. So I'm gonna stop talking. I am gonna turn the radio completely off. I'm gonna turn our air completely off too. That way we can make sure we have the same climate like we did before, and we are gonna set the cruise control. I'm gonna stop talking so we can get some numbers and we'll just watch the decibel app. here before we did the weather stripping and we did our decibel meter test we came up with these numbers on our city driving test we had a decibel read of 63 when we got on the highway our decibel meter app was giving us 74 decibels and then when we got on the repaved part of the highway that was a whole lot smoother it dropped down to 66 now after adding the weather stripping to all the doors, we did that test again, as you saw, and we have some new numbers. And there's not a huge difference, but take a look at this. On our city portion of driving, it dropped down to 62 decibels, and on the highway, it dropped down to 73 decibels, and on the repaved portion, our average was 65 decibels. Yes, there were some spikes and drops here and there, but overall, as you can see, there was about a one decibel drop across the board. So was the weather stripping worth it? In my opinion, I think for $39.99, if you've got 40 bucks to spare, I think it's a pretty good investment. It was a pretty easy DIY job. It didn't take too long to have things installed. And even though the decibel meter only showed a one drop in difference, 
in my opinion, it was only $39.99 from Amazon, so if you've got 40 bucks to spare, I think it was probably a worthwhile investment. The DIY job was pretty easy to do, it was fairly easy to install, and you can do it with one person. Now, as far as what the decibel meter app says, even though there was only a one drop in difference, I think to my human ears, I think it sounded a whole lot better. And maybe it was psychological, I don't know. But I think even though I still heard a lot of road noise, I think there really was a reduction in wind noise. So ultimately, I think it was still a worthwhile investment. It's not a must do, but I think it was still good in the long run. Now, if you've done any DIY jobs, drop it in the comments below. We'd love to know what you've done to your car. Don't forget to subscribe. We really appreciate it. And if you like this video, give it a like, and we'll catch you next time.